The world may change, but the Emmys will remain the same. Or will it? Let's take a look at the biggest surprises at the 2022 Emmys. After that, we take a moment for Cherry Valentine, who died at 28. We'll tell you where Darth Vader's new voice came from, and after that, well, keep watching to find out. First up, the biggest surprises at the 2022 Emmys. By now, we all know how the Emmys work. No matter what's going on in the world, we can rely on the Emmys to do the exact same thing as they did the year before. They revolve around exactly one drama series and one comedy series, and it throws everything it's got at those. This year, anything that had even the shadow of comedy attached to it went to Ted Lasso. It's a stark reminder that the Emmys will play it safe when it comes to comedy, even when a show like Barry is put in the mix, arguably one of the darkest, most stylish series of the last 10 years. But the same goes for Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul managed to weave together one of the most perfect endings in TV series history, with mind-blowing performances, including Rhea's Seahorns. But the Emmys seemed to be biased towards Ozark and allowed Julia Garner to take home the Emmy for Best Supporting Actress instead, to the confusion of dedicated Better Call Saul fans. Better Call Saul will still be eligible for next year's Emmys, but anything can happen in a year. But the biggest surprise of the evening was Squid Game, which took home two Emmys, something that never seemed likely. Thanks to that, Lee Jung Jae became the first Asian actor ever to get an Emmy. So maybe there's hope for the future of the Emmys after all. Next, Cherry Valentine a RuPaul's Drag Race UK star, dies at 28. George Ward, who is better known by their stage name, Cherry Valentine, died at the age of 28. Ward started their career in television when they were chosen to take part in the second season of RuPaul's Drag Race UK in 2021 and became an inspiration to many. Ward had been born in the traveler community in Darlington County, Durham. In January 2022, the BBC released a documentary about Ward's life, Cherry Valentine, Gypsy Queen, and Proud, which saw them return to their roots and they presented themselves. In the documentary, Ward explains how and why he didn't feel accepted growing up and decided to leave the traveler community at 18, only staying in touch with their mother. In a promotional video for the documentary, Ward said, It was something I wanted to do because if I was younger and saw something like that, it maybe would have helped me feel a little bit different about it. Ward was a qualified mental health nurse in 2015, three years before becoming a drag performer. They said that working as a mental health nurse had helped him understand people better and made him a better performer. The news of Ward's unexpected death has hit hard on all those around him, and the family asked for privacy as they mourn their loved one. It's not clear what led to the early passing away of Cherry Valentine. And now, Darth Vader's new voice comes from war-torn Ukraine as James Earl Jones steps down. Not all heroes wear capes. Most heroes don't ever even get a true moment in the spotlight, yet they carry on doing their job, no matter what the universe may have in store for them. James Earl Jones, who is 91 years old, has been the voice of Darth Vader for almost 40 years, but it seems like the time has come for the actor to step down. But because Darth Vader is such an iconic character, voice included, this put the people of Lucasfilm in a difficult position. How to move on? Well, you call in the help of Respeecher, a Ukrainian startup that uses synthetic speech technology to recreate voices with the use of recordings. Reese Beecher has been working for Lucasfilms before, also being responsible for the voice of young Luke Skywalker in The Book of Boba Fett and the voice performance of Darth Vader in Obi-Wan Kenobi. And now, Jones has officially signed off on Lucasfilms using old recordings to continue his legacy as the voice of Darth Vader. Bogdan Belayev is the speech artist who had been given the task of delivering the new recording. But on February 24th, 2021, Russia invaded Ukraine. Matthew Wood, the supervising sound editor, wanted to pull back on the workload, but Belayev wouldn't hear about it. Let's work, he told Lucasfilms. Let's work in the face of this adversity. Let's persevere. And not only did he finish the job, but he also did it as war raged around him. If that's not a hero, we don't know who is. Next up, we keep our promise and give you Michelle Williams is going for Best Leading Actress. Ryan Grantham, known for his role in Riverdale, sentenced to life for the murder of his mother and will reveal when you is coming back. Let's get to it. First up, Michelle Williams will campaign for Best Leading Actress for The Fablemans. The Fablemans made its debut at the Toronto International Film Festival, where it won the People's Choice Award, at the same time becoming the undisputed frontrunner in the early days of the upcoming award season. And one of the reasons why it was such a success is the performance of Michelle Williams, who portrays Mitzi Fableman, the lover of
of an artist who serves as an inspiration for her filmmaking son, Sammy, who is portrayed by newcomer Gabrielle LaBelle. The semi-autobiographical story of Steven Spielberg's childhood made a huge impression on everyone who was at the premiere, and many instantly recognized that this might see Williams get her fifth Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress, if not simply a win. But the plans have changed. Instead, Williams will have a go at Best Leading Actress. That means that Best Supporting Actress is now wide open for anyone who starred in Sarah Pauly's Women Talking, which includes Claire Foy and Jesse Buckley. But was Williams's performance enough to top the two presumed frontrunners, Kate Blanchett in Tar and Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere All at Once? We'll have to wait and see. The Fablemans is set to close the AFI Film Festival and will make its theatrical debut on the 11th of November, 2019. Following, Riverdale actor Ryan Grantham sentenced to life in prison for the murder of his mother. On the 31st of March, 2020, Ryan Grantham walked up to his mother, Barbara Waite, while she was playing piano in their home in Squamish, British Columbia, and shot her in the back of the head with a 22 rifle. Shortly after, Grantham, who was only 21 at the time, recorded a video in which he confesses to the second-degree murder of his mother and showed her lifeless body. Before leaving in a car stuck with guns and ammunition, he planned to find and kill Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, but changed his mind and changed direction. Plan B was committing a mass shooting, possibly at Simon Fraser University, where he had been enrolled. Grantham changed his mind again and turned himself into the police on April 1st, 2020. Grantham pleaded guilty to the murder of his mother, which means an automatic life sentence in Canada. The question in this case was how many years should pass before the former child actor would be eligible for parole. Prosecutors demanded a minimum of 17 or 18 years of a waiting period before Grantham could apply for parole, and his lawyer asked for 12. A judge has now decided to meet both sides in the middle and has decided Grantham will be eligible for parole in 14 years. The reason he decided to kill his mother was that he didn't want her to have to deal with the crimes he had planned to commit, but he never followed through. Next up, Netflix's You gets a release date for season 4 and announces new cast members. The Netflix original You is a different kind of cookie, and we're very happy to announce that the fourth season of the series is coming back in February 2023. The official announcement was made during the To Dumb presentation, where it was also revealed that the overhauled cast features at least a dozen new faces for the upcoming season. Tati Gabrielle will return, joined by Lucas Gage, Charlotte Ritchie, Tilly Keeper, Ed Spielers, and Amy Lee Hickman, just to name a few. Of course, the cast will be led by Penn Badgley, whose performance continues to baffle viewers around the world in his portrayal of the rather psychopathic Joe Goldberg. No Professor Jonathan Moore, because in the upcoming season, Joe has refined his persona, somehow having managed to get himself a teaching gig on the other side of the pond. Now residing in London. Joe claims in the official trailer for the upcoming season, this time around, I'm focusing on academia and instruction, while keeping my typical extracurricular activities strictly professional. We can't wait for part one of season four to drop on the 10th of February, and part two on the 10th of March, 2022. And that's it for now. Do you think the right people won the Emmys this year? Let us know in the comments what you think, and thanks for watching.